Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. So today I want to have a look at this tank, the IS-4. Uh, how it's a shadow of its former self and kind of fallen from grace a little bit since it had a bit of a nerf. Now, you may be wondering why I've entitled this video Poor Joseph. Well, basically, during World War II, the Soviet Union liked to name certain tanks after certain dignitaries. So, for example, the KV series, that's the KV-1, the KV-1S, and the KV-2, are named after the defense minister, Clemente Voroshilov, and the IS series are named after Joseph Stalin. Now, you may be wondering, why is it IS? Joseph starts with a J. Well, in the Cyrillic alphabet, when you say Joseph, it's not actually Joseph, it's, it's Iosif. So it's, it sounds like an English I rather than a J, and it's the reason why it's called the IS when you translate it. Although some places do call it the JS tank, so it's a Joseph Stalin tank. But I digress, we're here to talk about this tank. Now, the thing is, this used to be one of the most noob-friendly heavies in Tier 10. And it was a tank that, you know, most people could literally jump into the game and play it. Okay, it's always had some pretty significant flaws, but it was a good tank. In fact, it was so good that it was a staple in the tournament clan war scene for quite a while. And then Wargaming came along and gave it a bit of a nerf. And since that nerf, to be honest, it's just not been the same tank. It is a lot harder to play, not gonna lie. And it has fallen from its pedestal a little bit to be replaced by the IS-7. Because the IS-7, when this one got a nerf, that one got a bit of a buff. And when I say a bit of a buff, Oh, it got a bit of a buff. And we'll talk about the IS-7 in another video separately another time. We're here to concentrate on the IS-4. So let's have a look at how the two compare. Here we have them in Blitz Stars next to each other, the IS-4 and the IS-7. Now, as you can see straight away, the IS-4 has better DPM, quite significantly better to be fair. That's 2,636 on its standard ammunition compared to that of the IS-7 on the 2583. The premium ammunition for the IS is heat, whereas for the IS-7 it's APCR. But again, you can see that the DPM is a lot better. Moving back to the standard ammunition, which is both AP, you can see here that the penetration in the IS-4 does suffer a little bit. In fact, Penetration is one of its downsides. Compare the penetration of the IS-4 to that of the IS-7, you can start to see some of the differences here. However, the alpha damage in the IS-4 is a lot better than the IS-7. I mean, 420 is a high roll, I'm not going to lie. And you're not always going to hit that. But it's better than the 390 of the IS-7. The rate of fire is better. You get just over six rounds a minute compared to five and a half for the IS-7. The reload time is better. Nine and a half seconds compared to ten and a half seconds. The caliber is smaller and the shell velocity is less. Aim time, same, same. Dispersion is better on the IS-4. And as I said to you, the dispersion is when you get the aiming reticle which way, it, you know, how far it moves left, right, up and down. You can see there that the depression is the same and the elevation is slightly better on the IS-7. Moving down to the speed, well, the IS-4 is slow and cumbersome compared to the IS-7, both forwards and backwards. And you can see where that cumbersome comes from with the engine power. The engine power on the IS-4 is just not that great, which means the power to weight ratio, that's horsepower to torque, is less. That's just the problem. And the effective horsepower to torque is also less and the IS-7 beats it hand down. However, because the IS-7 is a heavier tank in real terms, to be honest with you, it does have terrain resistance issues that the IS-4 doesn't have. Camo profile is 
Well, it, it, it's actually the same for both, even though it's saying here that the IS-7 is worse, it's, it's actually the same. Credit coefficient C, the IS-4 is better, and with the enrichment boost, it is also better. View range, standard, standard. Hit points, the same. You can see that the IS-7 is more weightier than the IS-4, but you start to see where that weight is when you start looking at the armor. I mean, the IS-7 has got better turret armor than the IS-4, and it also has the pike nose, which means you can get different bounces. But we'll look at the armor profile in a moment. And then if we go down and look at Blitzstar's win rates, you will see that the IS-4 is struggling somewhat against the IS-7. Mainly because there's only 3,900 players playing the IS-4 compared to 12,217 playing the IS-7. But the IS-7 is, on the paper and on the facts, wiping the floor with the IS-4. So let's have a look at that armor. Now, this is the IS-4 facing off against an E100, and automatically you can see it's quite a big red tomato. Okay, the driver's hatch, you can pen that. Okay, you can pen these little cheeks here, but that has got to be one heck of a good shot. The thing about the IS, it can also side scrape, and it side scrapes nicely, to be honest with you. It does struggle with that gun depression because it's only six degrees, so you're not getting much, but if you can get it into a little haul down position and sort of side scrape, the only thing they can do is this, or the overmatch down here. That's a tricky shot though, and it's not the easiest. The, the biggest weak spot on the IS-4 is that bottom plate, and that is what everybody aims for. And if you're stupid enough to show your bottom plate, Believe me, you're going to get smacked, and that's going to happen. Face hugging it, well, you know, if you can face hug and wiggle that turret a little bit, then you may get away with it. That driver's hatch, though, is still wide, wide open. And this is facing an E100, as I said. But it, it's not bad armor wise. As you can see, it's, an, it's quite a decent side scraper. Put it this way, yes, you're going to hit that. But if you wiggle this turret around, then it's very, very, very difficult to pen. But let's have a look at some games and let's see how the IS-4 actually performs because it is a beautiful tank. Okay, it's not the easiest tank anymore, but it's still a beautiful tank. So here's another game, this time on Ghost Factory and contrary to what normally we would do, we're not going out into the corner and we're not going into the middle, not really. What we're doing, we're going to try and use the IS-4's strengths around this side of the map. There's the Bat-Chap, he's up there, nice, we can get a couple of bounces. Bounce 600, knock out 400. That's not a bad trade um, on the grounds that we haven't been spacked around. And this is where the IS-4 really does come into its own. That armour is spectacular. The gun may be a bit dodgy at times, but the armour is fantastic. Now, I, stupidly, I try and turn to get onto the LT. Bad mistake, because there's a Jaeger over there, which I didn't realise, because I didn't see him. It's only when he's fired that I spotted him. So, load up the heat, because I'm not going to pen him with the AP, and get a shot into him. And now we need to try and get out of dodge a little bit, because there's a lot of tanks over there that want to hurt us. Loro is in a good position. He's quite forward. He's in the action. I'm looking at this T62A. What I don't realize, because no one's seen him, is that there's a big lurking E100 right there who smacks me for 400. Not to worry, I think he must have used his premium ammunition there. Not to worry, I knock him back for an equal trade. Laura and I now can advance on this E100. The E100 seems to be focused on me. I think he is either got the lower gun or he's using uh, heat, but I think it's the lower gun actually. He's got, the, he's got the other gun, he's got non-derpy gun, and he's struggling to pen me, and Loro finishes him off. So we've already bounced 1,930, we've dished out 2,100. Again, you know, we, we haven't taken any kills, but we're doing our job. We've lost quite a bit of hit points, thank courtesy of the E100 and the Jaeger but we are still in a good position. There are only three tanks left, T62, going to smack him, I'm not going to finish him off, the, the, somebody else can finish him off. Now, we've done 2,400, we've got two tanks left, we've got this game in hand, not a problem here, we're going to win this one, need to curve around the corner. Unfortunately, 
Um, Loro gets absolutely annihilated by a Yeguru T57 Heavy, which is, they're, they're together, and you'll see that in a moment. Loro goes down, and there's a 57 Heavy smacking him. I tried to smack the 57 Heavy, but the uh, you also got smacked from the Yeguru, I believe, and I'm not too happy about that, <laughs> I've been losing Loro there, but he's done a fantastic job. Get one into the Jaegeru rather than the 57 Heavy because the Jaegeru we need to whittle him down and get a good bounce there, 800. He goes down, we've done 3.3, bounce 2.7. Love to get the kill on the 57 Heavy but the uh, the Yo is determined to get this kill and block me out of it, which is understandable. And we win. I didn't kill anything, so it's not a big thing for me. I mean, I'm gonna get, what, third class, I think. But that's okay. I can handle that. I will like a third class. There we go. Yeah. We did the damage. We blocked the damage. We did our job. We played the tank as it's meant to be played. It is a heavy. You play it like a heavy. Simple as that really, isn't it? Now we're going to move on to Winter Malinovka, a map I actually really like. And everybody wants to go to the sea cap. We've looked at the lineup and we think, oh, that could be a bit coming through the middle area. So Loro, who I'm teaming up with again, and myself, both on highest falls, have decided to go towards the sea cap. And again, I'm not going to be setting the world on fire in this game. I'm just gonna showcase to you what the IS-4 is capable of doing. And, you know, the, the awareness of its flaws, but also its strengths, because it has a lot of strengths. And, once you get used to those weaknesses and strengths, you can have a lot of fun in this tank. Now, as I said, one of its major strengths is its armor. I mean, its armor is fantastic. Okay, I've been smacked twice here, but watch this on the FB. 930, straightforward bounce, managed to get the shot in. And if you aim the gun in the right place and wait for the reticle to come down, the gun is not as bad as people think. Now, a lot of people struggle with the IS-4 because they're trying to do those snapshots. And you, you can't really do a lot of snapshots in this tank. Not really, because the reticle just takes too long, especially when, like me, you're not running it with an enhanced gun laying device. I'm running it not with that. I, like I said, I, I, I played around with the equipment because I wanted more bang for my buck over distance, so to speak. So I'll get to the equipment later, but as you can see, we've already done 1600. When again, as I say, I'm not gonna set the world on fire, but this is what the IS-4 is capable of doing. It is capable of having that slow advance, moving through and trying to just punish the enemy and farm them out of existence. Now, I see a lot of IS players, especially IS-4 players, rolling straight up in and getting involved and it just doesn't work guys you know you, you've got to take your time to an extent in, in all gameplays and it, we we've got the upper hand just about now in this game and that is the idea they've got the caps we haven't got the caps but we're whittling them down and we're whittling them down and we're whittling them down and that is the whole idea and we're working as a team. We're working together in the same tank. So we know, and this is a great shot from Loro, by the way, straight to that 57 Heavy. And that is what we're just attempting to do. Just whittle them down and use what we can. And it works. And this is how you should be looking to play the IS-4. You know, slow and steady, don't rush don't be in a mad rush to get to where you want to go because that is just a recipe for disaster and if you keep it calm and you keep it you know on track then you will get decent damage and the is4 is capable of winning games i mean we do 3.4k there we damage four kill two didn't that didn't block that much because not many people have shot at us we get you know some decent credits to be honest with you, um, it's tier 10. I mean, you're not gonna get shed loads unless you do like top stuff. And we become top damage along with Loro, who's also the, you know, part of the top damage. And that is what you can do with the IS-4. Now quickly, I wanna look at the equipment layout because I changed it halfway through the game play. So the first part of the evening I had 
a different layout. So let's just look at that. So this is my equipment loadout on the IS-4. Now, that's all pretty standard. I've got the, I've got the calibrated shells because I want that additional penetration. I've got the defense system because I, I, I want to be defended, obviously. And I've got the improved optics. What I have changed, I did have the enhanced gun laying device, which dropped the aim time down by 0.5. I changed that to the supercharger. Now, a lot of people are not going to do that. I've been experimenting with the IS-4, and I'll be honest with you, I actually got on better with the supercharger because it gives me that 30% additional shell velocity, which means I'm gonna have a better chance of hitting and penetrating from distance. And I've also got that less 50% to the penetration decreasing over distance. So though that's why I'm saying I run a different loadout equipment wise at the moment. I mean, provisions are the standard provisions I've just whacked in. Oh, I want that additional crew stuff. So what I've got, I've got the extra combat rations because, hang on a moment, let's just change that. So you can see. I've got the additional combat rations, so that way I can have a better view range, better DPM, better reload time, better aim time, etc., etc. And this is why I'm running that. I've then got the protective kit, which gives me protection, and then I'm running the improved fuel, only because I want that turret turn rate and the haul turn rate to be improved, because it was nerfed, basically. So now we're going to move on to this game. This is Middleburg, and contrary to what we would normally do, we're not going to the sea cap. Why? Because I'm in an IS-4, I've got no gun depression. Okay, so there's no point in me harking around up there. Not only that, I've seen the lineup of the enemy, and I'm anticipating them to come down. And already we've seen the 60TP, to make Loro puts a nice roll into him. I can see that there's a WZ113 here absolutely intent on being back in the garage within the first 20 seconds of the game. Why? Don't know. Just the thing he wants to do. And then I can see the super, the, the, I've got a Conqueror and I've got an Object 704. I could have taken the shot on the Conqueror, but I perceive the 704 to be a larger threat than that of the Conqueror. That's why I swapped targets from the Conqueror to the 704. Because the 704 is a TD, it has got a big derpy gun, and it can really hurt. Whereas the Conqueror isn't, you know, okay, it's got good DPM, but it's not as intimidating, I don't think, as the 704. How that bounced, don't know, but it's a mutual bounce, so we're okay with that. We're quite happy with it. Now I'm going to try and track him if I can, put him into place, and hopefully somebody can finish him off. But there's nobody around. My two mate Loro is too busy toying with the Yeageru, and no one's really helping him. I'd love to help him, but I've got too many tanks over this side. But, you know, we're going to get around there eventually. We've already done just over 2,000 damage. We blocked 1,000. We haven't killed anything. We, haven't take, we, we, we assisted in taking a base, but we haven't taken a base. Put a nice roll into the Conqueror. Now we're getting to push forward. And this is what I was trying to explain in the other video. You know, I like the enemy to make mistakes rather than me roll out straight away, bang on, get involved whittle them down save your hit points to push when you need to push that doesn't mean sit at the back and save all your hit points until the until you know there's only you standing against seven because that's just stupid what i'm trying to explain is make the enemy make their mistakes because that way you win more games if you just take your time and as you can see here we are whittling them down we're now at 3600 damage We've blocked 1,600, we've taken two kills, we've assisted in that kill, we're getting good assistance damage as well. Now we're gonna move around on the FV4005, I'm gonna load the HE and try and get it into the back of his turret, which, boom, we managed to do. Can I finish him off? No, I'm gonna pull away and let my teammate Loro do it. Finish the game with, he gets two kills, I get two kills, I do 4K damage, he does close to 4K damage, and we win, and we win by you know saving a lot of our hit points and that's the thing and we got a decent first class in that and we get a contribution medal which is nice you know i like that and did we earn any credit well we earned a bit of credit but not shed loads and this is what i like about the is4 you can play the tank beautifully but it is not the tank it used to be 
like I said, you've got to give it a little bit of TLC. That's been my take on the IS-4. A tank that is really a shadow of its former self. Well, it's not, it's not a shadow of its former self, let's not lie. It's still a decent tank. It's just not as good, realistically. Not as easy, I think that's a better word. Not as easy to play as it used to be. It's still got massive armor profile, which is fantastic. But it's not overly noob friendly like it used to be. It's still relatively noob friendly because of that armor profile. But, you know, if you're a newer player introduced to the tier, you may struggle with the gun on the IS-4, if I'm being honest with you. And its mobility is a bit sluggish. It's not as sluggish as some tanks, I, I fully agree, but it's still pretty sluggish. I would argue it's probably still the most noob friendly of all the heavies in tier 10. Um, although it could be argued that that mantle now sort of possibly goes to the IS-7. But the IS-7 is tricky because of that pipe nose and a lot of people don't know how to use the armor frontally on the IS-7. And they generally get very lucky with its trolley side armor more than anything else. Whereas the IS-4, you don't really need to think too much about angling or over angling. You can, well, basically put it in harm's way and hope for the best. Anyway, I've been Fujit. Well, that has been the IS-4. A little overview on the tank and how you should be looking at play it. By all means, comment in everything below. Let me know what you think about the IS-4, because I'd love to know. And until the next time, guys, usual stuff. Stay safe out there, have fun on the battlefield, and happy tanking, because that is what it's all about. Having fun and being happy.